to Whiskey Wednesdays with uh, with Dylan and Nick. Uh, sorry we missed you last week. We had some technical difficulties. Somebody forgot to delete um, videos off from his phone. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, make room for the bourbon tasting. So I think we might have had like 40 minutes last week. And yeah. we got cut off at 36. So that kind of creates an issue for us. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Beardy who was here last week. Uh, funny guy, did a great job on the show, except for the funny shit that you guys missed. Sorry about that again. Yeah. Uh, he did take a full pour and just straight up take a shot with yeah, me. Yeah, he did. Pretty healthy pour as well. So, uh, shout out to Beardy. Thanks for coming out. We'll have him on, I'm sure, one of these shows. For sure. Yeah. Wish you were here for this one again so we could, <laughs> you know, uh, talk about the things that we talked about last time. Uh,. All right, Nick. What do we know about Knob Creek? It's a Jim Beam product. Jim Beam product. Nine year age. Nine years, yes. Uh, still at Knob Creek, right? On Knob Creek. I'm pretty sure that's where the distillery is. Is it? I'm, I'm not quite sure. I'm pretty sure. See, I did all my research last week. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. We have a treat for you guys today. So we're going to do the Battle of Knob Creek first because we missed it last week and then we're going to jump right into uh, the highly revered and uh, highly anticipated episode of Eagle Rare. Uh, kind of a double header for us. Right. So this should be interesting because we've never done this. Um, but bear with us if we get a little slosh or anything kind of happens here. We'll figure it out. So uh, yeah, Knob Creek. Uh, this this is the Knob Creek single barrel or not single barrel. Uh, no. Small batch. Yeah. Uh, goes for like 21 bucks or something like that. It's, yeah. Yeah, 21 bucks a bottle. Uh, easy to find. It's like 30, I think. It's like 30. Because remember, you bought the gift set and it was like 30 with. The, yeah, I think you're right. It's yeah. 30. But it's cheap. It's, it's, it's affordable. Yeah. Yeah. Affordable bourbon. Um, very palatable. As you'll see. Yeah. yeah. So, uh,. Without further ado, we're just going to knock this out really quick. I'm yeah. sorry for those that really like Knob Creek. You won't get the full experience like you would have got last week. But yeah. we'll go ahead and jump into this and get it knocked out so we can get to the heavy hitter for this yeah. week. We're just going to compare the two. See how they compare. Yep. So this one here is Knob Creek uh, Small Batch. Comes in at 100 proof. Age 9 years, same as the uh, uh, single barrel. Yep. Um... Very good bourbon. Uh, I'll go ahead and pour it. We'll look at everything here. You and I will look at the legs. They won't be able to see it because they're too far away. But yeah. Figure it out. By the way, did y'all like our new intro? I'm sure it was good. Ooh, that's a nice healthy pour. Oh, yeah. For sure. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. I'm to to take care of my friends. Again, Knob Creek, small batch. Um, nine year. How are the legs, Nick? What are we looking at here, buddy? Looking pretty good. Nice legs. Nice legs. Let's see what we got. Yeah, they're starting to come down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Not too bad. Very nice color, uh, amber. Yeah. Um, what you would kind of look at for maybe a nine year bourbon? I don't know that it it stacks up to Eagle Rare's color. At Eagle Rare is year. like a little darker, yeah, I think. I would say Eagle Rare probably matches up with uh, Knob Creek uh, single barrel. Maybe. A I don't know if it's as dark, but around there, maybe. I think it is around there, yeah. Very nice golden color. Nice legs. Great smell. Alcohol in the first sniff. And then some maple. Honey. Mm hmm. I wish we had the video last week so we could have got all the tasting notes we got again. Mm -hmm. We could see if we could get them here. Some pepper, too. Caramel. Caramel, yeah. It's, just, it's like a maple syrup sort of a smell. All right. I'm going to go in for the taste right now. I think we got... That might have been the one that said in the last week. I'm pretty sure that was. Right up front is oak, followed by pepper and honey. 
I'm still getting that strong maple. Yeah. Um. Nice burn. Going down. This is. Yeah. Very light though. It's uh, it's crisp. I would say. It's got a good finish. And I, I feel like I shouldn't afford this much. We've got a whole other section to do, and we're. And we still got that. We'll figure it out. Right, we'll get there. <laughs> Go oh, well. We got Can't waste good whiskey, here. right? This is true. Going for my secondary smell. Apples. I am getting like a green apple like you got last week. There, yeah, there's a small green apple. Not a lot. But I tend to pick up a lot of green apples and whiskeys for some reason. I don't know why. This one, it, it smells like an apple pie where they didn't use cinnamon. Which would make sense. I kind of smell cinnamon. Into though, it. I kind of get some cinnamon. <clears throat> I wish I was. Man. That's the good thing about like people's palates and their noses, though, is people will pick up different things. Uh, there's no nut on this one at all. Not really, no, there isn't. Uh, flavor is great, great prof profile, real light and easy. Definitely a sipping bourbon. You can sit down and probably drink a couple shots of this and be A-OK. -okay. So. Yeah. If you look for the cinnamon, I can get cinnamon on the back of it. Like on the back of the tongue. You get it? Not no. like, like, like scrounged cinnamon. I should have brought out a cinnamon shaker. <laughs> I'll be right back, Nick. I'm going to check and make sure that this is still 100% going so that we don't have the same technical issues. If you see me running back and forth between here and the camera, just know I'm trying to make sure that we are getting the best show possible for you guys. Yes. Because I don't want to sit here and talk to the camera like we did last week and then figure out at the very end of it, we have no audience and we're not able to post it. You know what? We weren't even finished. We found out because your phone fell or you got a Trent, call. Trent got something on his phone. No, his... We found out at the very end of the video when I went over. Like yeah. Trent had his phone and it fell and then it caused my phone to fall uh, and then it went from there. So... Yeah. Oops. But let me let me see here. If it's still going. I'm gonna assume we're good for the rest of the show, and we'll uh, kick it from there. We good? It would appear so. Let me uh, verify. Yes. Eight minutes, ten seconds in. All right. Awesome. We don't use any high tech equipment here. Everything is uh, recorded on a uh, Samsung. Uh, Nope. And uh, all of our stuff goes through that. Uh, once we once we develop a Patreon, uh, hopefully people start donating, and we can kind of up our game here, not only on the bourbon, but all the equipment as well. Yes. Uh, also, you will find links. This is something I learned from Beardy last week. What's that? Links to the bourbons at the description. So. Not only will we have Knob Creek's website in the description link, uh, we will also have Buffalo, Trace. Buffalo Traces yeah. with Eagle Rare. So uh, look for them in the description. Uh, look up Beardy. You guys would have loved it last week. I'm sorry that that didn't work. Uh, it's kind of a disappointment to all of us. Yeah. I think that our channel probably would have taken off a little bit more than it has if we would have been able to get the exposure that we we'll, we'll, we'll get them on here again and Definitely. we'll we'll give them a shout out so um stay like tuned said, in the description check it out uh if you guys want us to try anything let us know and uh we'll try to go out of our way to buy it um as long as it's affordable and it's available we'll try to get it about like 40 bucks or less that's about our limit right now so keep that in mind yeah, don't go crazy yeah <laughs> Do my third taste now and see where we're at. We'll do another smell mm -hmm. for the viewer. We might actually have it too, it's whatever you suggest. So so oaky and, and caramely, it's it's amazing. Very good. And it's so easy on the palate. And this is the best part of this bourbon is that it is easy. It, I would say if you're if you're looking to get into bourbon, this would be one that I would recommend. It's great for beginners, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely apple. Like, if you've ever had Crown Royal apple, mm -hmm. 
you get that on the nose. You do. Um, a little bit on but the taste, you don't, not as much. No, I, I haven't even had the apple taste yet. Um, really? But we'll see what kind of transpires as the, as the show goes on. You know what? I forgot to smell the coffee grinds. For this one, it's okay. Sorry. First, first sniff. We're good. Anything new? No, but the finish is amazing. It is. It, it, For 100 it, proof, it's it's pretty smooth. If you swish it and you um, let it rest on your tongue for a second before you swallow it, it's a nice medium finish. Plenty of uh, plenty of flavors. You definitely get the oak on the after. Amazing though, it's just a nice smooth bourbon. I'm not, I don't get too much oak. I get more of the uh, the caramel, the maple, yeah, some yeah. vanilla, you, you get like the, the, the cinnamon. Vanilla is going to be prominent in almost every bourbon that yep. we have, mm -hmm. and it, I feel like maybe we should start mentioning that a little bit more because I feel like it's one of those things you catch so many other smells on the intro that you bypass that vanilla. Right. Um, you just look past. There's it. definitely some vanilla in this. Actually, a fair amount. You can taste it, you can smell it, it's definitely in there. And that's the nice thing about Knob Creek is you get just, it's so complex for the price range that you're purchasing in. There are better bourbons out there, but not many. Not many for on this price range, at exactly. least. Uh, Nick, you want to go ahead and, just a small, yeah. <laughs> small pour. I, I kind of went overboard. You went a little crazy, that's all right. Uh, I want to give a shout out really quick just to the viewers that I know are um, following us. Uh, Pete, I know you see these. Uh, Cody, I know you see some. I know you're definitely going to be looking out for this one. Kyle, uh, all the poor boys. JD, Troy, um, let me see. Degard, you know who you are. Um, Tri-State Bourbon Aficionados, appreciate you guys uh, checking in. Adam Pop, and uh, you know later in the show we'll kind of go into a little bit more. My brother Bart, um, Cassandra. Every episode got to be, but got to be the significant other, right? Right. If you don't do that, and they're gonna get mad. <laughs> Just kidding. Love you. Uh, yeah. For now, that's it. Nick, you wanna? Yeah. Uh, shout out to Sarah. Um, there's a family, Mike, Kev, um, anyone else who's watching that I send this to, David. Your grandpa? My grandpa, yeah, he watches this. What's up, Nick's grandpa? Yeah. And uh, Trent, if you're watching this too, we'll get you on here soon, buddy. Beardy! <laughs> All right, let's get into this. All right, so going to the nose, or sorry, the legs. And you know what we got to do before the nose, right? Nice legs. Real quick coming down. Man, if you were watching a tornado come down like this, I would be scared shitless. But this is nice. Nice legs. And you know what? They go quick. They're just done. The stronger the alcohol, the, the quicker it dissipates. And you can see, I don't know if, if you really can, there's a nice color here. It is. It's a little darker. It is 120 proof, single barrel compared to the 100, so it typically d tends to be darker because it's only from one barrel opposed to And this should more have than one. a little bit more complexity and flavor. Um, and it does. It does. You get a little bit more stuff here and there. But it's stronger, too. It is, so. and that'll kind of wash out. I feel like maybe if you put a couple drops of water in this, it might it'll, it'll smooth open up. it out a little bit It'll more. open up, yeah. This is a great bourbon. And it's, it's affordable at a uh, single barrel, so I would recommend it. I like this, this nose much better on this one. Don't forget to smell your coffee drink. Yeah, you did. But, excuse me. It's got a nice smell to it. That's weird. I, smell the, I want to smell the whiskey. It's got a good smell on it. But I wanted to smell the coffee grinds. Then all it smells alcohol now. It's interesting. It's supposed to neutralize your uh, smell receptors or whatever. 
This is a very... There's definitely the, the notes of vanilla and honey. Yeah. It's, in my opinion, it's just, it's like this, but just a little more potent in every level. It's just, it smells like uh, maple crown oil. Yeah, how that would taste. Chill. This, actually, uh, Knob Creek does have a maple flavor. I would, I would see that. That sounds decently okay. Like, I'm, I'm not I'm, a big fan of flavored I'm not whiskeys, either. but I'm that not. sounds like with Knob Creek, it might be okay. Because I feel like they wouldn't add too much, because it already tastes like maple anyway. Toffee. I know I haven't said that before, but there's definitely like... Are, are like you sure that's toffee. not because you smell coffee? Like no, no, no. Toffee. Oh. Not coffee. Oh, okay. I think it's a coffee. Caramel. Mm. This is a great smelling bourbon. Maple syrup, man. Would you. recommend as a cologne. Ideas, people. Let's get them out there if we can get stuff moving. Cause I will wear bourbon colognes or bourbon shower stuff, whatever. I'm not sure. I'm talking to you, Duke Cannon. Get it done. I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna try that. So. Oh, dude, I, I keep tagging Cassandra in it. Like so, look. Before we taste this, I kept tagging Cassandra in Buffalo Trace scented Duke Cannon soap, and I was waiting for the day that she'd be like, "Why the fuck are you tagging me?" <laughs> right? Yeah. It finally fucking came on, uh, I think it was Saturday. She was like, why do you keep tagging me in this? You don't even have a beard. And I said, it's not about the beard. <laughs> it's about the soap and it's about the cologne. Do they make a beard balm? They do. Really? They make a beard balm, they make a beard oil, and they make a cologne and a soap. So there's Dang. four, I think there's actually five products. There's I've only one, heard of this, the one. bar soap. No, nope, there's a whole bunch of Buffalo Trace, hmm. which... Let's be honest, it's kind of a waste. They dump it into the soap and the uh, and the beard balm and everything else that they're doing. Well, I mean, if you make how much they're yeah. making from all no. their good bourbons. But think about this. Buffalo Trace is a good bourbon. It is. I and agree. you're wasting it, dumping it in. When you could be wasting Jim Bean or Jack Daniels. Like, I'm <laughs> talking about black and white label. So, you've got all these things that you could be dumping in there that smell like bourbon. And you're freaking taking Buffalo Trace. Yeah. Well, Sad. I just proved but how good Buffalo Trace is. Buffalo I mean, Trace is amazing. Yeah. And it's a great thing that we're going to be doing a review on it today. And it's good that we're doing a competitor of theirs with uh, Knob Creek as well. Mm -hmm. Because Jim Beam makes, you wouldn't think that they do just based off from their white label and, and basically any Jim Beam label I'm not a big fan of. But this is just miles, leaps and bounds ahead of any Jim Beam product I've had. I've had Devil's Cut, I've had White Label, mm -hmm. I've had Double Oaked, and it just does not measure up to Knob Creek in the yeah. level of Jim Beam. I mean, the only one I think would, I mean, probably would go way above it is uh, Booker's. I haven't, I haven't had Booker's. have not had Booker's. So, those of you out there, if you want to send us a bottle of Booker's, <laughs> shoot us a message. We will... Uh, arrange for you to send us something like that. Booker's is expensive. It is 80 uh, bucks a bottle. We would love to do a review on that. So if you're able to get it, go ahead and do it. I'm going to go kill my dogs here in a second. <laughs> Actually, there's a chihuahua or something like that. It's, here, you know what we can do? And I know it's a little hot in here. We'll figure it out. It actually feels pretty comfortable. You're not going to close that, are you? Oh, I am. Oh, no. A little bit. Just to kind of... Uh, Pull out the noise. That breeze is nice. Yeah, but right here we should still get the breeze, but less, less of a noise pollution, okay. more of a, a camera-friendly environment. We got more lighting coming in. Yeah, now. there's more lighting. Uh, yeah. It's not as natural, but it should be just as good. Um, go ahead and taste this. Sorry about the delay. I know you guys have been waiting. It's so, it smells so good. Mm -hmm. It smells like a bourbon. Yeah. So warm going down. I will still stand by my statement from last week. Yeah, it's so, it 
It's so hard to compare the two. I I screwed up. I pulled a beauty. <laughs> no, don't worry about them. Because I'll give you the notes right now. Alright. You get more in the second taste. No, it's fine. It's definitely caramel. Oak. Vanilla. There is no peanut in this whatsoever. There's no nuts whatsoever. No, no, but a lot of Jim Beam products will give you that nut. Some of them, yeah. No homo. Sorry, I know it's Pride Month, whatever. We'll figure it out Pride later. <laughs> um, I still got a little in my mouth, so bear with me, Nick. It's definitely heavy on the, the dark but, caramel. You know, with this, with that one, it is, uh, it's harder to taste everything. Because well, you, you have to get past with, the alcohol. You deal with just so much heat. And like last week, what we said, this is more of a, uh, a bourbon that you would drink on a cold night. Mm -hmm. This is not a summer bourbon. This is a, no. uh, this is a winter bourbon. Sit outside and kind of enjoy, maybe fall, early fall, going into winter bourbon. Mm -hmm. um, we've had hotter bourbons, like that Noah's Milk. Oh, man. Uh, we haven't done a review on that yet, but still, that is a very hot bourbon. Um, I have to retaste it because it's it was hot. Dude. It was really hot. Um, this would be great in the fall, and especially in like a hot toddy. I, yeah. I wouldn't recommend mixing these, uh, just because there's other bourbons that you should be mixing instead of these, like yeah, Jack Daniels, or Jim Beam, or just yeah, something some, cheaper. Some people would say Jack Daniels is not a bourbon, but it meets every qualification. Until it, the name. It's a Tennessee whiskey. Yeah. Uh, Evan Williams would be one that I would recommend yeah. mixing over this. But this would be something that would go with that 100%. Um, you get an apple pie kind of flavor with it. Uh, cinnamon for sure. And uh, the smell is, is great. I love to smell the glass after. This I is stronger on the cinnamon. It is. It is. Yes. That And this is where I got the cinnamon last time. Yeah. Definitely strong in the cinnamon. But if you smell the if you smell the bourbon, it smells like it's when so you good. start making an apple pie and you put the sugar in the uh, There's baking spices. All yeah. kinds of baking, oh, yeah. baking spices in there. Oh yeah. What the F. Okay. So anyway, great bourbons, both of these. Almost equal. I would say it's hard to choose between the two of them. I got a winner. In my heart. Nick does have a winner. But the consensus voted best bourbon out of the two of these was the small batch. And that was between Beardy and I both agreed. And I was, I told you last week, dude, I was within a hair. I know. A hair. I think we have to get someone on here that actually drinks bourbon. I think get. that Troy would be probably the best. Uh -huh. Or JD. Uh, you haven't met JD. JD is the owner of uh, Poor Boys. Which is the group that we're part of. Right. He does the Kentucky chapter. Okay. And that was the original. He wants to get on here. We just need to figure out if we can do a weekend episode or something like that. Yeah, I, I actually have We could record it on like Friday or Saturday. Uh -huh. And then, uh, you know, put it out uh, maybe on Wednesday instead of. Yeah, we, can we would still it do. Ahead of time. We yeah, we could still do another whiskey Wednesday. Yeah, a lot of people do that. Yeah. Um, but that one with JD would be a special episode that we would do together, and we would try to look out for for him so he can get on here. Right. Um, but I think that this might be another one of the things that he needs to do with us is is taste and go through this one. But as far as like I'm concerned, and Beardy. Who is apparently a bourbon drinker? I don't know. He's, he's he not. He, like but I said last week, he drinks anything they put in front of him. So. This one will win out, or at least should win out, in my opinion. It's definitely uh, a more popular one. You get more affordable. Just, well, you're able to taste more flavor right off the bat. You go into it, and you might expect 100 proof, but it does not drink like 100. Proof. It tastes like a, almost like a 90 proof. Yeah. Yeah. And very smooth. The nice thing about this is, is this is a summer drink, and that's the kind of that's the season we're in right now. We're in summer, so well, late late fall, early summer, right? That's where we're at right now in the season. We're in summer right now for sure. Yeah, this is one you can sit out on your porch and drink, 
during the summer and not have to worry about overheating. That one is one that your ears are going to get hot and you're going to start sweating a little bit. It'll definitely warm you up. You would yeah. not enjoy that as much when it's 105 degrees outside. This would be the one that you would reach for during well, that time. If you did add a couple, like an ice cube or two. It would be refreshing. It yes, would. But you, you would dilute it down to probably around 100 proof and, at yeah. that point. But it's very good. I'm not trying to diss No, I know. It's I a know. very good, solid bourbon. And both of these, 100%, get our stamp of approval. So, with that being said, Nick, we need to rinse these glasses. And we need to go to round two. All right. We'll so do that. I'll, I'll take this. And we'll go from there. All right, just to clarify, $30. Uh, 45. So if you have deep pockets, I'd go for the Knob Creek single barrel. And if you're just a regular drinker, I'd go for the small batch. Both very good. Kind of a more deep flavors on the single barrel. But you do have to push against the alcohol. You have to get past that. A lot of people can't do that. But um, that's why I think uh, small batch is more for you know, everybody. Sir? I know that's yours. So. That's hot. It is hot. It's very hot. Should we cool these down? No, we should be fine. Okay. Alright, so, winner, at this point in time, until JD or Troy gets on here, is the Knob Creek single barrel, which is the most affordable one. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely readily available everywhere. I mean, both of these are. Yeah. Yeah. So go out and get you some Knob Creek because it's an amazing bourbon. However, better than Knob Creek, 100%, is the whiskey of the day. The bourbon of the day. Huh? You want to use mine? Yeah, let's do it. I, I mean, I can pull them both up. We have this. We have different bottles. Nick, let's uh, let's use yours for now. And I'll just pour you back what I have. Or whatever. No, it's okay. Good. I've got a bottle at home. So uh, you're right. All right. Yeah. So, Nick, you want to pull your knot yeah. creek off the table and throw that right there. Center table. Eagle Rare Buffalo Trace. Great products come from there. You all, y'all should know that already. Based One best, their best distillery of the year several times. The best distillery on the planet. And I love me some freaking Heaven Hill. Because I love that Evan Williams and that's good stuff. But this is the best distillery on the planet. Yep, for sure. Eagle Rare is next to none in the bourbon category. Pappy Van Winkle, I watched some reviews on, uh, on Pappy and Eagle Rare. They say Eagle Rare is next to Pappy Van Winkle. Really? On the quality of it, it's more available. All well, year long, you can freaking snag Eagle Rare. If you could find it. If you, it's, it is kind of hard to find, but you just have to do some searching. This is a 10-year uh, bourbon. The original Eagle Rare was not 10 years, and it was not small batch. I want to say that what I read was a 15 years. And it, was, it was a single barrel. It was, it, was a, it was a single barrel. Or no, no. This one's a single barrel. Or it used to be. The original one was small batch. Sorry about that. Uh, comes from the same place I want to say as old fashioned copper Mashville 1 mm -hmm. which is uh, the same as Buffalo Trace Buffalo Trace yes yeah. and uh, Low Rye. Taylor and Sazerac I want to say it comes from Sazerac that's what it is Sazerac makes this okay. uh, originally made by somebody with the last name of Beam and if you follow bourbon we were just talking about with the uh, Knob Creek. The name Beam is a very strong name in the bourbon community. And I don't care what you think. Beam makes good product. Outside of the name Beam. So, uh, Eagle Rare is, is a top-notch gold medal winning bourbon. This has been one that I've been saying, I think, since my first show before Nick got here. Yeah, you mentioned it in your first episode with Cooper's. Yeah. Yep. This is one that I've been waiting to review. 
because I get so many tastes from this. One that's prominent that I've always got is marshmallow. Really? Like a like a toasted marshmallow. See, it's been and a I'm while excited to see this. if we get this the same one here with marshmallow. We'll find out. And I every time I've had it, which has been from the same bottle, mm -hmm. is marshmallow. And what would be a good idea to do maybe is uh, we try yours, mm -hmm. and then I need to kill this dude. <laughs> you want to kill it? So we will try mine with the marsh. The taste like you want to pour yours first, then and kill it real quick, or we'll do yours and then we'll compare it to um, yours. Mine. Yeah, yeah, yours is a little old. No, ours is the same. Yeah, because we got the same ones. Somebody cleaned out my honey hole. I hate you. <laughs> you know who you are. Um, yeah, we'll try yours. This is the same one, right? Yeah. So, so it should be around the same time. Yeah, you picked this up when you were up in um, Right Pat. Yep. I hate you, by the way, because I went to go get another bottle so I could replace the one that I'm almost out of and you took it all. You know who you are. It's a little lighter. You know, it's a, it is a little lighter than I remember. It's a beautiful color, though. Beautiful color. Check the legs. A nice swish. Yeah, it is lighter. It's I think it's lighter than Elk Creek actually. Yeah, we, you know what's funny is I remember it being darker. I do too, and it's a year older too. Yeah. Ten years. Yeah. Not a lot of legs running down right there. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Beautiful legs. Nice amber color, very like a golden amber. Ten year bourbon here. Yeah. You know I don't need it. it. Smells amazing. I get uh, apple. Yeah. On the first. You do get it up front. But just hints and hints and hints of caramel. I mean, yeah. not even hints. I would say plethoras of caramel. You know what? And you do get like a, a sweet marshmallow smell. I get a little orange in this. Do too. you? Yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, definitely. And I try to, you know, sometimes Nick and I, we contradict each other, but there, sometimes we hit on things that the other might not. If you watch the, uh, what episode was that? Battle uh, of the Bonds. Yeah, Battle of the Bonds, where I found the chocolate, the, uh, and then McKenna? Yeah. Yeah. It, what, what was the... Uh, what? What Here. was... It wasn't... T no, 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 no. The brand of uh, pop, of uh, sucker that you get. Oh, that, um... Tootsie Pops. Tootsie, That's what Tootsie Rolls. Tootsie yeah, Pops. Tootsie yeah. Pops. That's sometimes, what you got. Sometimes we might contradict each other and we might be picking up on different notes. Uh, and that's okay. Here, sometimes somebody needs to say something in order to uh, kind of to pick it up. Recognize it. Yeah. Because you might not recognize that note right off the bat, but definitely you get you know, apple and just so much in this. This is a great smelling bourbon, but I get marshmallow. Just picture like eating a s'mores, and you can smell that in there. Just a little bit of s'more. Not like, well, I guess I shouldn't say s'more, but more of like a marshmallow. Very sweet. Maybe it's like a, like a toasted marshmallow. For sure, definitely toasted. A little bit. Yeah, I can see that. Maybe some brown sugar in there too. This reminds me of camping, and I love camping. Brown sugar too, maybe. Yeah. You know what? I, it's funny because I just had some when I was making those ribs. Oh yeah. I took a little pinch of brown sugar. I just tasted it. You definitely get brown sugar in this. Mm -hmm. It's a great assessment. Nick. Oh my god. Alright, dude. I, I'm not going to get too I mean, much more out of this. I mean, there's not a lot of smells, but I mean, if you can pick up each one of them, they're, they're nice. Amazing bird. Yeah. Gold medal winner. And like I said, second happy. I don't even know if it's second to that, because the guy that I watched the review on said that this might give happy a run for its money. I think that people are running after Weller instead of Pappy. That's how you Weller is great. Weller. Weller's great. We need to do a review on that. We should do a comparison of the uh, antique versus the green. Dude, green wins out. 
You know that. <laughs> but we'll do a review for you guys, because for us, you know, we know. But for you guys, you need to know. Just tell us what you want to see, and we'll, we'll figure it out from there. God, this smells amazing. Still marshmallow. It's thinner than I remember. It is, but we also just went through 100 proof bourbon. It's not much of a finish. Like I said. Yeah, yeah, true, true. You gotta be fair with this. Right. I guess that so. marshmallow flavor is there. It is. It's Even in sweet, this one. Sweet, sweet, toast of marshmallow. And I get almost like a walnut, walnutty finish, kind of. Do you get that a little bit? No, I don't get any nutness. I get a little bit. But it's okay though. Like I said, we have uh, we might taste different things. But mm -hmm. That is a okay. You can't get much smoother than that. This smell. This smells like grandma's apple apple pie and it's marshmallow. sweet. It is so sweet. It's look, dude. 100% I'm going to bear down with you guys. If you want a starter bourbon, this isn't even a starter bourbon, but if you are looking to get into bourbon and you need something to jumpstart you into that, <coughs> this is it. This is the quintessential bourbon besides Buffalo Trace. This will get you right into it because it's sweet. I wouldn't say it's rum sweet, but it's got a different kind of sweetness to it. It's like a brown sugar toasted marshmallow. Sweet. Yes, it's amazingly good, and it's affordable. Uh, Nick, what'd you pay? I paid. I paid something different because I bought it on a military base. Yeah. Uh, he paid thirty for it. Thirty dollars forty cents. But I would say base. around the Cincinnati area, maybe thirty-five, forty dollars. It just depends on your area. Forty would probably be the. The max <laughs> going rate on yeah. this. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can find it, do not hesitate. Pick yeah, it up. it is hard to find. It's one hundred percent hard to find. Yeah. Um, what's nice about this is Blanton's is a little salty. I've had Blanton's one time, and I can just barely remember it. But I can remember that it was just a little salty, mm. a little like almost sea salt. Yeah, there's no salt or pepper in. No, this. not at all. This is great. This is a near and dear bourbon to my heart. Uh, if I had the opportunity, I would probably buy four or five bottles of this at once. And I hate to hype things up. Well worth it. Well worth it. It is a good bourbon. And I like that it comes in a wine bottle. I do. I love the design of this. It's, it's just awesome. It fucking screams American. I mean, come it does. On. <laughs> there's an eagle on it. Yeah. Uh, there's stars. Mm -hmm. They're fine, so it fits. <laughs> this is a great, great, great bourbon. And I would highly recommend this over Knob Creek. This beats Knob Creek and everything else by far. I agree. Uh, beats out Buffalo Trace, which is yeah. on, on my top ten bourbons. Um, beats out... What else have we had? It beats out Four Roses. 100%. Four Roses... Uh, you need to have the... Uh, no, no, no. I'm saying the uh, yellow, yellow label. Yellow label. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Beats yeah. out Four Roses Yellow Label. Mm -hmm. uh, beats out... What else have I had on the show? Cooper's Craft beats out Cooper's. What, Taylor? I think this and Taylor are pretty close. Mm -hmm. For me, personally, mm -hmm. beats out Taylor. Really? I'm pretty close. And McKenna... I think I this like would beat out more than this. This beats out almost every bourbon I've had. The only thing that it beats out, or that it doesn't beat out, mm -hmm. for me, is Blanton's. Stag. Stag. Stag is almost number one on my list. Oh yeah. I, I think I think the that. only thing that this doesn't beat out that I've had is Eagle Rare, because it's Eagle Rare. <laughs> Uh, but Eagle Rare 17, we need to look for that bottle. The very Eagle Rare. No, no, no. There's Eagle Rare. Which 10. Is this one. Which is this one. Yeah. There's Eagle Rare 17, which is part of the antique collection. Uh huh. And then there's, uh, what is it? Double Eagle Very Rare or something. Double Eagle Very Rare. Yeah. Okay. Which 
is 20 year age oh, bourbon, $2,000 retail a bottle. So that means from Buffalo Trace, it is $2,000. Can you buy at the distillery? No. no. It's given out in a raffle. At the oh, market. right, yeah. But even then, when you win the raffle, you still have to pay $2,000. I would not pay $2,000 for a bottle. Uh, I don't care what it is. We will be listing Buffalo Trace and Eagle Rare in the description. Uh, definitely visit their site. But not only that, Nick has been to their distillery. It, I have not yet, it's, but it's on my list. It's one of the biggest distilleries I've ever been to. It's like almost like a small town. Very cool. Very cool tour. They got tastings upstairs. You can actually taste this Buffalo Trace and the vodka they make and the bourbon cream they make. So they make a gin too. I want to say I'm, I'm pretty sure they make a gin. It's a vodka. I'm pretty sure because actually I, I saw the vodka at one of the liquor stores in uh, how Newport. Was, how was the uh, cream? I haven't had the cream. It, you didn't try the cream when you were done. No, I didn't do the tastings because I was Buffalo gonna, Trace makes. Something like a uh, like an Irish cream, but this yeah, bourbon. like a Bailey's, but yeah. it's got bourbon. In it's a bourbon it's cream. Supposed to be top notch. You can buy it down there in Newport. The bourbon cream and the vodka I've seen. It's called Wheatley vodka. It's a it's a wheat vodka. It's a wheat, so it's probably sweet. It's probably sweeter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That might be it. something we might have to do. I know we're Whiskey Wednesdays with Dylan and Nick. However, I would like to try to uh, see. Uh -huh. The distilleries and how they branch out and see what type of alcohol they have and how it compares to their bourbon. You'd be surprised. A lot of them do branch good. out. Yeah. Did you try the, the vodka? Mm -hmm. I haven't no? had it. No. Okay. Well, it's, it's, it's very inexpensive. It's so like 15 bucks a bottle. Our plan right now is to do a cocktail episode, which includes, I mean, we're probably going to be trashed by the time we I would it. say old fashions, Manhattans. Boilermakers. Boilermakers. Sure. We both like beer, so that's okay. It has, to be, a, it has to be a good beer, though. Uh, you know what would be great to try? Mm -hmm. Several different Jack and Cokes. Maybe not Jack, but whiskeys and Coke. A Benchmark 8. A Benchmark Possibly. 8 versus the Jack. Uh -huh. And then whichever wins that versus, I don't know, we're going to have to give up something. Do, do you want to do like a bracket of like different... No, I would like to pick one... Um, Just one against another, uh -huh. and put that up against whatever were like that, like what you just said, Jack versus Benchmark. Uh -huh. And which one wins that goes up against that. Hard what about record. like uh, Jim Beam versus Evan Williams? That would be interesting, and that would be a bracket. I mean, those four are in the same price range. This would be something we would have to do over the course of. So a couple, a couple weeks, yeah. yeah. Because I don't think with our um, tolerance and our capabilities at the moment that we would able, that we would be able to pull this off. I mean, it wouldn't have to be a big pour. You just need to get the right up. Uh, no, but so the standard with having drinks is one point five, right? That's what a shot is. I think it's one so an ounce, ounce and a half, sometimes yeah. two. Yeah, and a pour. Is but the two. standard would be one and a half. The good thing about that is we don't have to do it all at once. No, we, we can so we can sip take, and Yeah, we can take a sip and then save it for the end of the show or yeah, whatever save it for later. and decide yeah. which one. Uh, we, we could do it all in one episode. Really. I would like to try, for the, if we were going to do that for the first one, uh -huh. Cooper's Craft 100 versus Evan Williams. That's kind of... As a, a bourbon. As a bourbon? Without anything? No, no. Mixed? Yes. That'd be kind of interesting because... That Cooper's Craft is great. That's a great bourbon. But I wouldn't bourbon. mix it because it's just... You, you wouldn't want, want to. No. But you have to for the bracket. I just, I just but we wouldn't... It, look, it would be one shot each, right? Uh -huh. Boom, boom. But and then here's try. what I'm saying. It doesn't compare very well because Cooper's Craft is 100 proof. Everyone's is an 80. 86. 80. No, everyone's it's 86. 80. It's 86. 100 percent Are you sure? Do you want to bet money on it? I'm looking it up right now. No, no, no. First, bet money. I don't bet money. No, no, no. I'm not a bet man. <laughs> bet money. No, I'm not betting Come money. Come on, Nate. I'll what bet you a poor. You bet me a poor of what? Eagle Rare. Okay, bet it. Alright, let's see. Nate, Black label. 
Right? Yeah. Okay. Nick's about to lose. He doesn't even... I think he knows it in the back of his head. But Nick's about to lose. 86 proof. Hold on. You know how I know that, Nick? I've got a couple bottles over here. You know, we could look this up even faster than fucking Google. What the fuck? Hey, I got you, dude. Watch. No, I, I got it. You're right. For some reason, it's All right, so some yeah, weird ass Almost number. 90 proof. Yeah, there's a jump. However. That's stupid. However, Evan Williams is one of the smoothest black label bourbons out there. Just like Jack. It's smooth. It's very comparable to Jack. It's good. Yeah. Uh... You know what we still haven't done yet, Nick? What? Our second tasting. Oh, yeah, so, right. yeah, we need to, uh... Shut up. <laughs> we need to do a bracket. We'll get that done for you guys. We'll do a bracket, and we'll freaking taste it over several, several episodes, and we'll maybe do, it like, a bracket of six. No, or eight. eight. Eight would be easier. So one versus the other each episode. We pick which one. We'll figure that out. Um... Maybe next week we can start, or this this week until next week we can start drafting that out. For now, let's focus on this. All right. So, back into the secondary smell of this award-winning 10-year bourbon that would be called a single barrel, but with the way that uh, Buffalo Trace is doing the lines right now, yeah, they actually switch from hand to machine, so that's why they can't yeah, call it single because barrel. Because there will be a couple drops here and there from every. I barrel. mean, you might get a bottle that is single barrel, but you wouldn't know it, because yeah, yeah, it sucks. I'm sorry, you guys. Like, it, it, it's technicality reasons. That's why they couldn't put it on. It used to say single barrel right on the bottle right here, but not anymore. The 17 is a single barrel. Yeah, which we need to find. If somebody can point us in the right direction to find that. We'll gladly, gladly try that out. The smell is still amazing. Definitely notes of marshmallow. It's just a good still. sipping bourbon. That's it. You get no no spikes, no pepper, no no burn really. No salt. No salt. No. It's sweet. It's just that toasted marshmallow, cinnamon, and some. I get some walnuts on the end. A hint of cinnamon. I don't get any nut. The finish is nice, medium finish. It's not. It's not long. No, it's only ninety proof, so you won't get a long finish. But it is. It is nice. Nice. Burn. I wouldn't say like it's not as burning as that one twenty. Mm-hmm. I don't get a burn at all. I get like a nice. What's called the Kentucky hug. You get a nice. Right, yeah, it goes down. It's and, warm. It's yeah. like, oh man, it's nice. Uh, there is a burn, but it's not horrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, this isn't gonna, if you drink this all night, it's not going to give you heartburn. No. This versus. Uh, <laughs> uh, this versus not quick is not going to give you anything. I'm going to tell my dog really quick. <laughs> Very good, huh? Very good. He's really gonna do it. <laughs> my mouth is still numb though. I switched it, my mouth is still numb. From that? Yeah. My mouth is numb after the uh, single bourbon, uh, not Creek, but that shit's strong. Very good bourbon, 100%. Bottom line, Nick, if you find it. This? Huh? Who drinks this? Uh, <laughs> just the lucky patron that can find it. Anyone who likes bourbon. I would say that's about right. Yeah. Because if you can find this, you've got a unicorn. Yeah, and if you can find it, you most likely you can only buy one bottle, which kind of sucks, but that's just how it goes. Yes. Um, that's who you picture drinking, so it's the lucky person. I would say somebody who's got great taste in bourbon. And well, I said, I said like the bourbon drinker. A like little if bit you, of money. If you love bourbon, you love like a typical bourbon, you'll love this because it's just one hundred percent. It's just so smooth, so Anybody flavorful. Who drinks Benchmark, Buffalo Trace, Weller, or 
uh, staying would enjoy this. I, I feel like this, I like this better than Weller. Weller's pretty good. Oh yeah, for sure. 100%. Yeah. This is better than Weller. Oh yeah. And this that, beats yeah. Weller every day. Yeah. Uh, but if you enjoy the bourbons that I listed, this is for you. And like I said, Buffalo Trace makes the best bourbons in the world. And that's not just saying like, oh, we're Pappy Van Winkle fanboys. I've never had it. Nick's never had it. This so, is great bourbon. This is sweet. It's got everything you need in it. Yeah. It does not. It tastes like an 80 proof. It does not hold back. Yeah. And if you have any questions, uh, there's actually an email in the back of the bottle. It's eaglerare at bourbonwhiskey.com. So or you could just comment us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any questions for us, though? Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is a Mashville one, which is Buffalo Trace. Very covered that. Yep. This is great, 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 great bourbon. Has my stamp of approval. Every bourbon that I've had on this show so far has my stamp of approval. There probably won't be a bourbon on this show <laughs> unless we're doing like a Something. recommended tasting yeah. that won't have our stamp of approval. Uh, old Dan Tucker does not get my stand up stamp. Old Dan approval. Tucker, the motherfucker. Yeah, the dirty <laughs> butt fucker. <laughs> does not get my approval. Uh, the uh, Midnight Moon uh, Oak Cask Corn Whiskey does not get my approval. I've had one. And Jack Daniels uh, Tennessee Honey does not get my approval. I hate flavored whiskeys. Yeah, gross. <laughs> you know what the problem is though? Is I had a problem. I had some issues where I just drank that. Hey. Channel? No. Almost. Wrapping up. Uh, so anyway, had some issues. Drank half a bottle of uh, Tennessee honey by myself. So, yeah, so you got sick of it. Yeah. Straight. Yeah. Got sick. Puked it up that night. So, I'm done. Yeah, that's my deal with Gentleman Jack. Yeah, I can't do that shit. No Gentleman more. Jack is excellent. Gets my stamp of approval. If you don't get sick on it. It's not a bourbon, though, but it, it gets my stamp of approval. Uh, Nick, anything to end the show? Uh, no, just, if you guys have any suggestions of what we could taste next, just comment us and we'll do our best. Tell to, us. We'll tell go, us. We'll go out and buy it. We'll do our best, best to com accommodate you. So. I know uh, H and H Tin Sahar has been multiply requested. Has it really? Well, we'll see. The most requested bourbon we will try yep. sometime soon. H and H, ten star, number one requested so far. Well, we'll see. What well, this we've gets. only had like six people, six or seven <laughs> people request. Let's try, let's try to break that record. <laughs> let's go, people. Get on it. Uh, from the studios of my garage, and from uh, Nick and I especially, thank you so much for watching this any support that we get is appreciated and uh we love you guys might not know you but we love you uh yeah anything you need to have reviewed let us know hey anything else no all right here we go till next week guys signing out peace last